Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. Couldn't get my. You can't get what going? Lord, I couldn't get it off of mute for a second. Oh, I see. I gotta figure out why my camera's not working. All right. Oh, this happened last time though. Let's see.
So, we got a few things that we really need to cover this morning. One is uh, replacing Mike Hardy, and also we talked about uh, having Jim be here for the chamber, and we approved it last time, subject to getting approval from the, the chamber itself. And I just got an email last night, so so we would be presenting Jim to the city council as a new member for the representative chamber. And then the next thing is to, we have some candidates to be on our committee. We have some great candidates. So we're gonna um, have them, well, maybe you can introduce yourself and then we'll decide if you wanna interview them all one time or one time out or, hello. So go ahead, Mark, and we'll go down the line and introduce yourself real quick. I'm Mark Kershaw, I've been living here with my wife since about 2004. Uh, we've got four kids, two, the two oldest are married, that's my grandkids, three grandkids. My third oldest daughter is living in Provo, and my youngest son's finishing up at Pace in High School as a senior next year. Uh, I found out about this opportunity because the email that went out. And, uh, I'm kind of at that point in my life where um, some uh, available time has opened up for me. I, I finished with a, a significant calling uh, in the church, and, and then I also coached my son's soccer team in his competition soccer team and he's finished up of course uh, this last year he plays high school <coughs> soccer in the spring so i'm done with that too and, uh, i thought oh, i better get busy before i drive my wife nuts at home so <laughs> and uh, I, I know a lot of these guys that have served here um i've known larry um, he's he lives near me um you know I, i've known stan spencer um, jim mortensen Theron hill who you know served for over 50 years uh, with the fire department and volunteers. And as I look at what, you know, Larry's been involved with earlier in the city council and the mayor now here, um, and, and other individuals like uh, Bill Wright, I know, and, and uh, Scott Spencer, and I'm impressed with their willingness to share some of their time and their talents uh, with the city. And we've been given a lot, our family. So I thought I'd like to do the same. So that's a little bit about it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, my name is Larry Skinner. My wife and I have lived here in Payson since 1975. We raised our family here. Uh, my wife taught at Payson High School for 18 years. She was a librarian there. I uh, spent my employed career at Mountainland Supply. Some of you might be familiar with that company. I retired six years ago. And uh, <clears throat> as Mark said, need something to fill my time now. <laughs> uh, I've uh, always been somewhat civic minded and felt that, uh, you know, if you first, if you ever want to complain about things in the city, you should be doing something to help fix those things. And if you don't ever participate in, in, uh, in within the city, then you really don't have any right mm -hmm. to complain. Uh, plus, Payson is a is a nice community where we've had a, a lot of good memories raising our family and, and i've always felt that you know do your part to move it forward if you can do what you can that's a little bit about me <laughs> my name is chris Taney. i'm originally from vegas we just moved here in september into the new um, twin home development area over on arrowhead road, um, kind of that area annexed from Salem. Um, so relatively new here. I feel like I've known the place for a long time, though. All my college roommates in um, at BYU were all from Payson, you know? So like, I feel like I finally earned my place in that community. I've been working for this my whole life. Um, yeah, uh, so we have a young daughter. She's two, almost three years old. She's our only one. 
I'm in the retirement class of 2016. So um, I, I aspire to your accomplishments for sure. Might take me a bit to get there though. Um, so I'm interested in uh, just serving where I am. I'm getting involved in my community. I work for Zions Bank, uh, their parent company, Zions Bank Corp, um, specifically in bank card. Um, and so I spend a lot of time doing financing. Um, kind of what I like to do most is get to know people. I like to build relationships and find out what their needs are. Um, and so it feels like this, this um, position is just an opportunity to do more of that, um, get to know the local businesses and, and help them thrive. So I'm that interested. Hello, I'm Dale Smith. I'm the only girl, apparently. <laughs> um, I am 30 years old. I just moved here in March with my husband and my daughter. Um, but Spanish work has pretty much been home forever. And so Payson is also an extension of that. Um, so I just decided that I would try for this position because I also want to get involved with the community. And I think we live in probably the same the area <laughs> because I live really close to where you are. Um, but uh, I am the precinct vice chair right now for Payson 401. And so I wanted to get involved with more than just politics in the community. And so that's why I decided I wanted to do this when I found out from the newsletter that goes out each month that you guys are doing this. So. That's why I decided to, to do this, and I'm really excited to be able to get to know the community and, and be a part of it, but um, a little bit about my background. Um, I was a lot it, with my jobs in accounting. I was, I've been an accounts receivable clerk for quite some time, and um, my degree is a crime scene investigation, so like super different, but I love the aspect of forensics and whatnot. So that was kind of why I decided to go in that. And so I feel like I'm a really good fit because I am super attention to detail oriented and I love being able to take it out and do that kind of stuff. Um, but with my husband and I, we have a daughter who is 18 months old and one on the way who will be here in less than two weeks. <laughs> so we're pretty busy, but I feel like this is a good opportunity to to get involved with the community. And so I'm totally willing to do whatever it takes to be able to do that. Great, thank you. So what's your pleasure? Do you want to talk to them all together or, or one? Everybody go out and come in one at a time, or what would be your pleasure for asking questions? Together? Yeah. Okay. Um, Chris, I'm going to let you take charge. I think my wife had a problem with her car started, and she's got school to go to, so I've got to call her real quick. And then if I have to leave, if you guys can talk to them, make a decision, and Dave. I got the, the survey up here. And once that's all done, then you do the survey up here. So does that work for everybody? Yeah, okay. good. Go ahead. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> this is a chore. All right. I love being charged. <laughs> yeah, that's a good I know one thing that we've talked about, like in a lot of interviews, is about the time, and some of you pretty much touched on that as far as the time, because it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but the people that we do work with, we hope that they're committed enough to come to the meeting, like, you know, which is the first Thursday yeah. or the Wednesday, and, yes. and then the committee meetings and whatever that takes. And um, but we have a list of all the committees that we do have. Oh, I see a little piece of it over here. Okay. 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 Can we just run down through the different committees? Because <laughs> I know yesterday I was when I was talking with Mark, I was trying to off the top of my head remember some of the committees. Try all tapping there. and see if it comes up with this name. Yeah, here you go. Back there. Oh, let's do that after. No, they, they want they want to look at we were talking about the committee. they wanted to show the committees there. The different committees that we have. Oh, the different committees. Go back to that. Okay. Yeah, it's there. Just came up. Okay. So obviously the economic development, the health care 
Brian, but just to finish what I was thinking, I have the golf event, which is once a year at the end of September, first of October, strategic planning, um, business retention, community and tech, UVU and tech, downtown committee and business recruitment are the different committees that we have. <coughs> As you look at these different committees, is there a certain committee that you would be interested in adding your talents to? Well, for, for me, like in our conversation, I work at the Duke Health, and so we do a lot of externs from, from tech that rotate to our clinic, um, and which obviously helps us too, because externs typically come in as, as new MAs, and so we, we work closely with them, and I'd be interested in that in the UVU. If that's a fit for what this group needs. I, I have already been involved uh, with uh, the golf event. You've been amazing at the golf event. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and obviously have an interest there uh, in continuing with that. Whether selected today or not, I will continue on that committee. But uh, I'm, I would be willing to serve on any of the committees. Uh, I currently serve <clears throat> on the Governor's Committee of Consumer Services, which has a lot to do with uh, utilities and, uh, and so have a little bit of expertise in that regard. Um, I love downtown. That's the first place we went when we moved here. We wanted to see what's down there. Um, it's fun talking to the businesses there. So I think that would be an interesting committee to be a part of. Um, but also business retention can play a lot off of my relationships um, preferences. You know, getting to know someone, understanding who who they are, what their challenges are, and seeing if we can fit those those challenges. I would honestly do any of them, but the three that are sticking out to me the most are the strategic plan, the website, the business retention, and the downtown plan. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to put that to you. Oh, <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. <laughs> I have a question for all of you. Just I want your thoughts. Um, economic development is always a um, topic of discussion for cities and we're a small city growing. Um, I think this year we've had more building permits than any year previously, even with the downturn toward the end of the year. I don't know if that will continue, but the growth is coming. But I, I'd like your thoughts on what, how you see economic development in our city, because generally to get economic development is you need more house tops. And some people don't want house tops, they want to keep a smaller town feel and not have the growth that, that, that's coming all over Utah. But I guess I would just like your thoughts on how you see Payson City and the growth that, you, that you'd like to see or how economic development, with how you'd like to see the city grow in conjunction with economic development. That's, that's kind of a long question. <laughs> And I don't want to start on this side. Yeah, totally. Um, so in my last issue, I had mentioned that I feel like there's a part of Payson that's like the old Payson and then there's the new Payson. And so I would love to see them blend together. And I think that is going to be what businesses come in. And I mean, there's a lot of housing that is coming in. And so we definitely need the businesses to be able to keep up with the housing that has already started. Uh, so I feel like it's just meshing the two together in a way that is going to be good for what the people who, who have been here in Pisa for a long time are comfortable with, but also helping the people who are new, like me coming into Pisa and feel like I don't have to go to Santa Quinn or to Spanish Fork. I can find everything that I need here in my local town. Yeah, I really like that. Because um, moving in where we have, we can be drawn to Spanish Fork easily. It's the same distance as Spanish Fork as it is to, to a lot of the pacing things. So um, I think finding a lot of the, there are a lot of these new high margin, uh, low physical location places like drink shops, um, dessert places. I don't know. There's, there's a lot of um, things that exist even where we were living before in, in South Jordan that aren't down here that I think could really make um, people come in. Like we would 
travel 15 minutes to go to a specific drink shop when I live in South Jordan. Why? Because they had free popcorn. Like, <laughs> there's just these unique little business ideas all over the place that right now my family's going to Spanish Fork to get, but we could probably learn them in here um, to keep people, like you said, in basic. <coughs> well, I, I love the small town um, feel. I served previously two terms on the city, Payson City Council, and at that time, things may have changed since that time. But at that time, there was a report from the governor's office, and I mentioned this in the pre interview, that had the, based on uh, existing annexation uh, agreements and such, a projected uh, growth of the different communities in, in the area here. And at that time, the projected top end growth of Payson City was 150,000 people, assuming all of the annexation agreements were in place at the time were with a group to those boundaries. Uh, we may not reach 150,000 people, not in my lifetime anyway, but we are going to continue to grow. And as much as we like the small town feel, that we've enjoyed, <clears throat> we're not going to remain a small town. We can continue with, uh, you know, some of the things we do, the, the I mean, they celebration, some of the festivals we have, and things like that, to kind of maintain that small town feel. But we're not going to be a small town, and we're gonna we're gonna grow. And as we grow, we have to have the ability to support that growth. And, as much as I love um, small businesses in town and will support them whenever I can to support the growth that we're going to experience, we've got to encourage and solicit some, some business to our, I, I mean, I look at auto dealerships, um, you know, and the revenue they would bring to the city. I suspect that Paris RV will be a big boon to the city. We've got to have more things like that to support the growth that we're going to experience. And, and, and speaking of that growth, and I was a proponent of this when I was on the city council and continue to be, the growth has got to be across the board. It can't be all one one uh, category, for example, we can't continue to only bring in cluster housing. And I know that's a great opportunity, especially for first time buyers, but we need to have opportunities and places in the city that are going to attract everyone across the economic spectrum uh, if we're going to be the city that we want to be. <laughs> I love living here. I love the way that pace has grown. Um, it's been sustainable. Um, and that's one thing I'd like to see continue as far as farm power and water and things like that. I, I know that's been on your mind in trying to keep up with the growth, uh, and as well as you know, things that set us apart, like the green spaces that we have. I really enjoy the parks that are near our neighborhood and, and the opportunities it provides us. So um, sustainable growth um, that keeps us uh, moving in the right direction so we're not growing too fast. Good, thanks. That was my main question too. It's just philosophy on, on that. And, and how do we maintain quality of life? What is that? How do we balance that with growth? The economics. I mean, we put a whole bunch of parking lots or whatever. We lose the green spaces. We lose that. Is it? Well, but, but, but I think I think one of the really good decisions I know came at an economic cost was four bay, and keeping that developed into an area where people can go by. Because um, I've talked to individuals on both sides, and I, I think that turned out well because I think it attracts a lot of people for its green space, and there's a lot of people that enjoy riding there. I think that will attract other people outside Payson just to come right there. And that, that brings some economic um, opportunities as well. You know, if we're talking about Payson and 
what what's the what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the slogan adventure home to adventure home to adventure well there you go I mean that's case and canyon right and if we keep capitalizing on that it, in my opinion and, and using it in that way then then I think that's an economic opportunity for the city as well just to invite people not just in the city but outside to enjoy. I, I think we have to continue to provide a variety of uh, opportunities for citizens to enjoy the community. Uh, some of the little small parts, some of the, you know, the swimming pool is a good example, youth programs. Uh, and a lot of these, I, I really, it really bothers me um, when I hear people complain about the cost to the city of things such as a little league program, uh, uh, a golf course, uh, and I'm an advocate of the golf course, and I, uh, the swimming pool, and how it, it's a drain to the city of uh, fund. But, you know, I think all of them provide uh, not only as, as they continue to grow and develop, they they provide, they pay their way for the most part, a lot of them do, but they provide opportunities for the city and the residents of the city to enjoy the city and to not have to go to Spanish Fork or someplace else to enjoy those things that, uh, that a lot of the cities provide. And I think we have a good base for uh, a lot of those things for, for our citizens to enjoy. Uh, and, and they don't all have to enjoy the same thing, but we need to try and provide those opportunities for each segment of our community. Well, I, I remember as you talked about that, Kim Anderson, because I knew Kim when he was, I think, in the Parks and Rec Committee, he was talking about, I think it was Bruce Bills back then as mayor, that it was a big cost for putting in the pool. But I think one of the arguments that, that he stated that at least interested me was, hey, it's going to give the youth a lot of opportunity to do things to be at the pool and do other things instead of out doing maybe something else. And it's an investment in, in them as well. Um, I know my own family's um, benefited from that. I know my own son goes up Pace and Canyon with his buddies and they just go camping on their own and have enjoyed that. So I think, you know, there's opportunities here where we can invest. It may seem, I, I understand it's, it's an economic hit initially, but I think in the long run, there's some intangibles that will benefit the city. And the families there. And having said that, Mark, I, uh, I've taken a lot of criticism over the years because I was on the city council and voted for the bond to build the swimming pool. Uh, and I was on the city council and pushed hard for the money to remodel the golf course. And uh, you know, others would have a different opinion than I, but I think both have been real assets to our committee. And there are other things other than that. Chris? So um, I'm taking examples. But when you talk about balance, I'm thinking about green spaces, big green spaces, small. Um, I think balance is also reachability. It's um, having enough of these utilities, these um, opportunities closer to where you live. Um, so, uh, we lived in Daybreak in South Jordan, and they did a really good job of this. There was always a park within walking distance that had decent amenities. They had um, several pools, but they, they weren't huge. They were smaller, um, and they had like a kiddie pool that was great for small families with young children that only had 18 inches deep with a lifeguard on duty. Um, they, but, but wherever you lived within that community, you could get there. You could get there easily. There was a walking path through some like beautiful area to get there. Um, so I, I really drawn a lot of inspiration from that, how, how convenient it is to bring the members of the pacing together um, with more access to these things. So maybe it's not just a big park in the center of pacing, but maybe it's a bunch of littler ones that are, that are more closely associated with uh, younger family developments. Um, maybe it's um, building trail systems that, that lead to key parts of pacing that keep that, like, that, that help people to to especially new plants, right? Like we're, Payson's growing so much because there's not much, not many other places you can grow. Um, for us coming here, price was a factor, right? Like coming here to, to a new build, 
um, here was several hundred thousand dollars less than anywhere else in the, in the county, right? So I expect a lot of new people to be coming, young families, especially with the school. How do you get more of those people moving in the right directions? And if you're using the outdoors, can we get trails and, and pathways and things like that to try to figure out how to push people towards the epicenters of facing, but also giving them simple access to, to um, outdoor items like parks, wherever they are. You know, so I don't know if that really came together very well, but um, I like the idea of like a hub and spoke, big things in the middle, little opportunities spread all around, but everything points towards the center. I think that's how I would balance um, so that you get interaction in your day to day life where you're at, but also are driven towards the epicenter of all business. I agree with everything that has been said. Um, and I do feel like it's the diversity. There are a lot of young families that are pretty much in my situation where they love to be outdoors. So like with the golf course, um, my husband loves golfing. So it's getting that updated like you did is probably a great idea to help draw on people. And the swimming pool, we love the swimming pool, just like those kind of things. And like the library, I feel like maybe the library needs to have a little bit more attention put on it because there are so many children. <laughs> and if you have a public space where the kids can feel like they can go to for any type of an outlet, I feel like the library would be a good place to start, especially where it is right on Main Street downtown. It would be a good a good way to to start drawing people right there so they can see all of the shops that are around there, but so that the kids have somewhere that they can go and then the, the adults or moms or dads, whatever, can go there as well and make it feel like this is a really great place to be. This is this is where I want my kids instead of yeah going out and maybe wreaking havoc on the rest of the city. But um, I do agree that it is just the diversity we need. We need stuff for the older part of town, but the newer part of town. And the way to do that is basically through like these surveys that you guys have come out with. Hopefully, getting more people involved so that you get their opinions as well, which I think would be a great idea to just have more people's opinions instead of just a small amount, especially with all the growth. Having all of that combined is a great way to be able to get everybody's opinion on what needs to happen with this community. I have a quick question for you. So. I, I love your passion and you want to be involved, each one of you, as you know, there's only one, one position open right now. Now you're all great, quali great qualified and everything. So my question is, and, and again, this is this meeting's open. Anybody can come to this meeting and have input. So you don't have to be on the committee. Um, but my question is, would you be willing to serve on a committee with one of these other committees if you aren't selected to be as one of the, the, the committee for the whole uh, for the whole group, the whole lifetime development. I'll answer first. I I think you've got some good candidates here and uh, I I personally would not be offended uh, for even more than just slightly disappointed if someone other than myself was selected. I can continue to be involved by serving on one or more of those as, as a out of committee, uh, as I have on the golf on the golf tournament that. I just personally think if you want to be involved, you can be involved. Whether you're serving on the city council, whether you're serving on a committee, uh, for you, if you want to be involved, you can be involved and should be involved, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, like I said, I mean, uh, I'll go wherever you If you feel like the skills and abilities of any one of us fits better in one category, I mean, it doesn't matter. Same. I mean, to me, the committee is what, like one of these committees is kind of what I envision in my mind is just the majority of the work that would be done in this position. So it would be the same if I was um, 
officially a part of the group or or just a volunteer to help? <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll do anything. I just want to be involved in the community and kind of know what's going on and help to move things forward. Okay, uh, does anybody have any last the last question I'd like to ask? Okay, well, oh, I, go I, ahead. A real quick one. So you don't even need to have a sentence, just one word answer, or maybe it's several words, but uh, what, if you could have one company come to PESA, what would it be? Uh, I think um, we've already done companies that we have higher education um, trade training. Uh, I think that provides a lot of opportunities for not just you to train here, but to live here and, and help the community grow. So I, I think that's a great thing uh, for PESA. I'm not I'm preaching the choir, obviously, because you've got to come. I think that'll provide a lot of opportunities. I I would agree with Mark Tesser. I, I alluded to it earlier. I think I think, and this isn't one company, but like large car dealerships or things like that, you have to provide places for those, but those bring in the tax base for us. And uh, that's what you need to grow is ways to support the growth. Um, in my business, I see a lot of what every everyday people buy, and what the categories are that they that they spend the most time spending their money in. And um, restaurants, fast casual, is the most it, it is top three spend of every person's wallet. Um, so I don't have a specific one because I think diversity in restaurants is so important. Um, but I think building that diversity here, fast casual especially, is really popular. Um, and building that out in different parts of the city so that everyone has access to them would be important. I like the restaurant <laughs> idea. I think we, we need a little bit more diversity with, with restaurants as we said. But um, to say something different, I would say maybe something that's more like of an activity center that would be good for all ages, I think would be like, I don't know, do we have like a rec center here that is, yeah, then that's probably what I would say, something that everybody can do in one section of town. Excellent. Can I add Darden to that list? <laughs> <laughs> Particularly Longhorns. <laughs> Darden restaurants. Okay, thank you very much. So I got a quick question for you. We, we just did a survey, I think some of you took that. Um, I don't know if you want to stay in, and we can go through that real quick, and then we can, uh, as a group, we can talk about this after, or if you want to leave, leave now, and, and we can talk about you guys and then do the survey after. Would you like, do you have time to stay in? You're going the survey? through the survey. That you, yeah. I personally would like to have a discussion about the survey. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you would, so I just. <laughs> Oh, and just so you know, we do have another fast casual here. Just open uh, Popeyes. So Chris kind of ruined it for me. I was going to go one night. She put it out on Facebook and everything. It was so crowded. I <laughs> that was supposed to be their soft opening, and they're they're being packed yeah. ever since. <laughs>
Okay, so this is a survey that went out to everybody in the city and some people from outside the city took it also. Um, and I think there's about 1,500 responses to this survey, so it's a good number wow. of responses. So I think if you get like 400, your sample size doesn't change too much after that. You probably know that, right? I ran into that. Okay, so. Um, So that's just the demographics of who took the survey. Can you hide the uh, the names on the? No. Yeah, hit that. Hit that. Hit what? That minimize the line. There. Little line. Short line. Yeah, I don't see it all there. good age sample gender uh, years in the city uh, we did have the 20 years plus uh, bigger proportion of that and with the children and everything so it's a pretty good sample a good 15 1578 the next question was refer a friend to the city so let me do it here that finger so um, it's just a uh, if you refer a friend to the city uh, somewhat positive and strongly positive was uh, over about 75 percent. Plus, that's pretty good. Um, we did have some somewhat negative and strongly negative, but overall, I thought it was pretty good uh, for the survey. If you have questions, ask them, or if you want to comment as we go along, I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Another thing, and, and this will be up online at some point in time. I guess I want to show it to the city council first and finish this off, but. We can go over here and you can go to, you can actually turn these on and off so you can see, like if you just want to see what everybody over, let's say, um, everybody. Uh, residents, how long they live here. Yeah, so if you, you can turn them off so you can see just, if you want to just see everybody that's over, been over 20 years and see how that changes. And actually we went through some of these, it doesn't change that much. From, mm -hmm a little bit but it's pretty pretty consistent so interesting um um then uh, why refer a friend to the city and whoops i gotta go back I don't know what I did there. So. <laughs> yeah, I won't go back. Did it change the sorting that you unchecked all those things? No, I should make it there. Oh, my mouth. Refer friends. Let me try this one again. There we go. So, um, I'm going to quit trying to change it. <laughs> yeah, the size of the change. It's getting me. So, I'll just leave it the way it is. Yeah, hey. that's it. I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, Brian, is it possible yeah. to get a detail on this to get us the, the detail where we could read over that just with some of those comments that uh, that are coming yeah. in? Yeah, and, and I won't, we won't put, send this out until the city council has an opportunity to look at it. We just uh, want oh. them to, before it gets out in all the public. But perfect. But so on the, and so, um, Anyway, I'm referring a friend. It just had the, the top ones was, uh, you know, they had some negatives and then they have positives. And the, the, so you, as you go through it, you can see, you know, some of them were positive for referring a friend or some were negative. So, and then the next 
group is just each one of these uh, that have something on the about referring a friend. You can go in here and look at the all the comments, and it's sorted by. You can go in and pick whatever comments you want. Like I think uh, parks and facilities is one of the negatives, but you can go read all the comments that people made besides just taking the survey and putting a check mark. Uh, direction of the city. Um, and it, the the question was on the first one is that one how how much did the city change in the last five years? It's improved, stayed the same, or gotten worse. So it looks like we're according to the survey we're kind of heading in the right direction. And and then how many sixty three percent say the right direction? That's probably pretty good. I mean, you pretty much any more you get fifty fifty on anything. So <laughs> so anyway, we still got lots of work to do, but there's some positive things and. There are some things here later that we'll talk a little bit more about the direction of this committee, some of the things we can look at. And then um, compared to other cities, um, we're uh, about only about uh, you know 25% or 27% worse than other cities. So um, this is the direction of the city by area. So we can go in and see all the areas. Area six. Anybody want to guess where area six is? That's after Missile Test Range. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, West Mountain area. <laughs> and uh, they they were annexed into the city, and some of them probably didn't want to be, and they wanted to not see growth in that. So mm -hmm. it is it is interesting that they have a little bit different opinion than some of the more established parts of the city. West Mountain considered up to the highway or it's uh, basically from the interstate out to so from the interstate out to the landfill. So the people more closely, closer to the interstate, are probably the ones that are more. Yeah. So yeah. And the way we divide this up by area is the voting districts, the the precinct districts. That's how that was done. So there is a map. I don't have it here, but so we just then we looked at the events. And so what you have is the first line is what's most important to the to the people. So city parks, open space, and trail system. And then if you add, then it looks at after that how good that how good those uh, that uh, open space city parks is. So you have very good, okay, and very poor. So uh, it's very important, but it looks like it's pretty good shape of what we're doing. But then you go to the historic downtown. It's very important to the people in Payson, but it it's shows it's pretty poor. And so that's something you can say, well, we could work on that because it's important, but it's, and we are working on that just so you know, we're, we're doing the streetscape and everything. So that should answer some of these on this one. And then, then you got city events. I mean, we, it's important, but we do really good. Uh, so that's how you can look at these. Library, it's, it's pretty important, but it's um, but it's not so good. But it's interesting. Uh, there's some place in there if you and I don't remember where this is, but if you go to the people that use the library, they have really good good feelings about the library. It's the general population has a different opinion than those that use it. It's really interesting. Um, then the pool, uh, community pool, recreation programs, and then. Uh, like Spring Lake, it's not too important, but it's not very good shape. So anyway, so we can go through these and this will, uh, when planning zoning and city council and everybody, is, they'll use this data to help make decisions. Budgeting, if Dave looks at budgeting. City benefits, um, small town fill is one of the most important things. Um, and we do fairly good with it, it looks like. Cost of living. Uh, we don't have a lot of control over that, but it's, it's but we do have taxes and, and utility costs and things like that. Um, family friendly is very important, and it looks like we do really good in that. So um, then, but one we don't do very good in, which is important, is quality restaurants and shopping, which we we knew that would be very high. So that's and some one. of that is population based. Too. Yeah, some of it's population based. And there's but. Understand that part, right? <laughs> Why don't we have a Texas Roadhouse? Yeah. 
<laughs> then uh, it's interesting when the job opportunities it wasn't too important, but they said poor, very poor, even though we have no, we have lots of jobs around here. Lots of jobs. Lots so, of jobs. Um, if you need more time to look at these, uh, let me know. Uh, this is just a uh, growth and development. Uh, again, uh, you got your most important in how Duke are doing in those. These ones, so we looks like we have a, some struggles in all of these categories. Um, maintenance of roads, uh, very important. Uh, and we don't do price of getting those. Managed growth and density of the city. Again, uh, very, very important that uh, don't do so well on that one either. And some of these are contradictory because you go to another place and they talk about, you know, diversity and things like that. They, it's pretty good. So it's going to be hard to digest some of this. Track new restaurants, uh, again, don't be very good. Maintain historical downtown. Uh, so anyway, those are those. Um, safe and security. Traffic congestion, everybody's worried about traffic congestion. Um, not doing a good job. Not doing a very good job. Some of that's so oh, that's the state we the got state. To deal with. Yeah, we got to deal with the state. Did they push that open drive through? Will that open that will help. change on that Main Street, would it? Yeah, it will. Keep some of the outbridge traffic from coming through the center of the city. Even though we love our well, <laughs> <laughs> even though we love our that's right, we love our <laughs> uh, city beautification upkeep, uh, very important. Uh, we did uh, just last year put together a beautification committee, so maybe we'll make some if that's not crime, uh, important, but we do fairly good in crime. Um, production sidewalks, uh, traffic controls, job lights. Anyway, you can kind of see those. So there's some that are very important that we could work on. <clears throat> uh, done that a lot of those don't have a lot to do with this group here. It's more internal for the city. Uh, city operations, again, the uh, uh, curb sidewalks and streets, uh, maintaining uh, infrastructure such as water, storm drain, all those like good important, but we do a very good job managing the city budget. Uh, we need some work on that, but it's not too bad. Um, so these are, these are fairly good, except for the first one there. Okay, now this, what this is, is all those ones that we just went through, that, that people had to pick their top two, I think. And so now you're really breaking down everything and now we're combining it into to more if what's really, really important. Again, managed the growth and density of the city is and the small town feel were the two most important things. So those kind of go together. And it's interesting, we do fairly good with the small town feel, but managed the growth of the city is we don't do so well in. Uh, cost of living, and sure. Uh, so maybe you look at these top ten of these. And just watch what ones that we could really work on: getting quality of restaurants and shopping um, is one that we could look at in this committee. Um, uh, let's see what are some others. Of course, that manage the growth and density could be very poor. It could mean don't do it. <laughs> it could be don't do it, or or we want more diversity, or it could be not in my neighborhood. Yeah, not in my neighborhood. <laughs> well, I think some of it too is advertising, putting the message out, or marketing what you are doing. So yeah. I mean, people yeah. want more restaurants, but they don't want growth. They don't right. understand that to have a restaurant, we have to have a people with a average salary with or whatever and they want that higher so they'll bring in a texas road house or a lawnmower or a gardener or whoever it is yeah. we got we got to get that message out too and and people want more streets and or trails and stuff that adds to the cost of living you right. make a developer put in a trail house goes up yeah so yeah. we gotta we gotta present some of this too. We're, we're constantly dealing with how many rooftops do you have 
and they will not take into account the demographics that we showed that they, you know, we draw as far as Richfield. And if we can just get them to stop here, it would be wonderful, but they don't pay as much attention to the demographics. I say they, the businesses, uh, as they do the rooftops. And, and so it's kind of a push pull there, but you know, we've got 180,000 people south of us that come up here on a regular basis. We have the hospital, we have the temple, uh, we have Walmart, which we get a lot of that data from. And so we're pressing more hard on that, but it, again, some of it's timing. Can I make a comment on all of what they said? I visited or I attended uh, one of the conventions in Las Vegas back when when I was on the city council, and, and our purpose for being there was to solicit restaurants and people to come to Payson. And, and I remember specifically talking with Chili's at the time, and their comment was. Uh, Basically, this is you don't need to come to us. We know who you are. We know where you are, and when you qualify, we'll be there. That's what they. That's what they said. So for example, you know, Spanish Forks got forty-five to fifty thousand. We've got one three thousand. So that's why they're there. <coughs> yeah, and what Lynn said, messaging is, is, and I think part of our maybe the maybe the West website is too plan. We ought to have a slash messaging. And we can help the city with messaging. And, and some of the things that we're working on is, is bigger entities coming at, that would bring draw people. And so hopefully we, we will qualify with the, the influx of people as far as uh, 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 coming and visiting and going home uh, that, that they'll have some prop retail files that can have responsibility that can be supported by people that come and then go back to their home for tourism. Okay, let's see. If there's a couple. If there's any more here that kind of pertain to us, um, in restaurants. Uh, so those are some of the biggest ones, probably. Restaurants, small town feel, nice density growth. Okay. Basic service evaluation. Just look at this real quick. Um, road maintenance skins. Uh, Secondary water, the big ones there. And then this is a bad time for this survey for snow removal. <laughs> <laughs> if you did it during the summer, it would probably change this yeah. a lot. Or but it kind of went out right during a snowstorm. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a little biased. <laughs> Uh, it's just contacts with employees uh, in the city and what kind of contacts they've had and how, how uh, so 20% of the people have contact with the uh, public words. I have a question for you, Dave. So like that snow plowing stuff, is there like certain routes that they focus on first, like school routes, yeah. and then yeah. they go from there, they broaden it from there, but yeah. the yeah. first priority is to get the school buses down the street, schools right? and the major roadway, yeah. the collectors, yeah. and then it goes down to the local. So that, that's that's so challenging. If, if you're on the local road, and yeah. you're going, wait, yeah. I can't yeah. get out my driveway. It's like we're coming. Especially with the four or five guys that can drive the trucks, and so it takes a while. Oh. With the last storms, they get really wet, and yeah. so, so it just gets it's heavy. We <laughs> had a lot of complaints about covering the sidewalks. Yeah. Find yeah. people in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll go through this real quick because we're running out of time here. So, um, yeah. So this just uh, rates uh, contacts they've had how, when they uh, like you, you can see the justice court's probably pretty low and code enforcement that you can understand both. But it just goes through the different departments, so that'll be good for the departments to look at. Uh, new investment priorities. Um, so this is just where people would like to see. Money go as uh, curb gutter and sidewalk. Um, and recreation center came high, and also libraries up there. The, yeah. the, the lap <laughs> pole, covering the, the, the pole for the lap pole, and, and the new library and, and uh, uh, hiking trails. So, there again, some of those depend on funding as well and the ability for the city to sustain a loss, which most of those will show. But it's time. It's
it's good information right from yeah. the council because a lot of things we were trying to look to push is maybe a new city center because i think they're the oldest one in the county <laughs> but it's very low on the citizen priority mm -hmm. uh, they want more so it, it might help the city council to to focus on maybe we ought to focus on something different maybe a rec center is something to push higher than a, a new fire station or of course, but on the other side of that, they don't realize how much it takes to maintain a, an old building, too. Right. So there's a push pull there that sometimes the citizens don't really fully understand. You know? so, so going back to messaging, one thing we're looking through another survey that kind of goes through these and kind of what the costs would be and why we're looking at it, like the city center. Most people say, well, why do you need the city center? Well, if we put out, here, here's why we're looking at the city center and giving some information spend a million dollars a year for upkeep uh, HVAC and stuff like that. Does that make a difference if you're more willing to do so? So we're looking to do another survey and kind of going through, all right, for a rec center, would you be willing to have your tax increase this much and, you know, get a better field, deeper dive in some of these things. Because rec centers don't traditionally make money. It's a service that's been provided. That's why I say it's timing, you know, whenever the city could financially afford it based on some of the other things they're doing. Well, it makes sense or it doesn't. So these are the events that we have and what they um, I several friends who appreciated the Christmas display oh, in the two I've heard that. I've heard yeah, the music people say yeah, the music's been awesome. Loved it. Huge yeah. success. Well, I think the number one thing is aligning just like our customers or anybody else, what the customers value putting your time and resources towards that. So yeah. if it is small town fill or whatever we have to align and this committee is to attract businesses that are aligning with those needs we need higher tax sales tax we need to understand that because property tax most of that goes to the school district yeah, yeah. sales tax most of it stays in the community so paris rv car dealerships those things are high sales tax dollars mm -hmm. are attractive Ones that are just generate a warehouse or even manufacturing like this don't generate a lot of income for the for the city. So how do we focus our resources to align with that? And we've got some of those coming. Yeah. It's just a matter of the economy, you know, doing what it's supposed to do. So yeah, you're you're right. It's interesting with the with I always thought sales tax is important, but the state takes a big home. Then, then they started dividing it up between cities. Um, half went to the state to send back to the cities, depending on their size. So it doesn't matter if you have the, the, the car dealerships here or not. But we get a very small percentage when it has to come down to it, but it still helps. But it's interesting the park tax is direct, everything comes directly to us. And we've raised $1.7 million in the last. Four years from the park tax, which just so every time we get a business in that helps with all the recreation stuff. So basically, what it is is point of sale versus uh, sale out in the county. And it's like, like Brian mentioned, there's a formula that, that tells how much we get from other sales within the county. But we do get a certain amount of point of sale and then a certain amount of what is determined out in the county. We know our citizens go out and shop outside the city. Okay, keeping small town feel. Um, one surprised me is the ag, ag protection, keeping ag. Um, and it's just for our venture day, so we're going to do in June some of the things that we wanted to see happen. And uh, these are just a different comments, so we can look at all the different comments. So that's it in a nutshell. So. Um, We'll, we'll keep using this to, uh, to guide our committee. Next time I want to <clears throat> and do goals for the committee, what you guys would like to see us work on specifically for this committee. So uh, any questions or anything? If not, we'll- So my question, what, what did you mean from the survey? What stuck out to? Um, I don't, one, one thing that surprised me is the curb and gutter came so high. It's, uh, that uh, people concerned about it because I just to me it's like okay you got you know a lot of the city has curb and gutter but some doesn't um, the covering the pool and the rec center those came really high and then just uh, maintaining the streets and that which is, is a tough one because of the cost and that so but those are some of the and 
when I knew restaurants that chopped it, you know, I, oh, there's another one in there that for uh, high income jobs. It wasn't very high on the priority list, but it said we're doing a really poor job of having high income jobs too. So just some of those things like that. So there's lots, lots of being worked out, but I was pleasantly pleased with the overall feel how we're doing. Then we'll take a sub um, question to the high income wage as far as what do you consider yeah, high income? Yeah. 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 Is it 50? Is it 100? Well, I think they're just targeting tech. And yeah, that's yeah. why people want those tech jobs. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Just pacing the tech hub. Right. Mm -hmm. right. 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 Our structure yeah. is what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there are higher paying manufacturing jobs if you get the robotics and all that type of stuff. And that oh, and we can have this discussion all day. <laughs> <laughs> Our guys are making a ton of money. And that's that's the right, right. a lot more than a school teacher. And so that's why we right? Yeah. You start at so, the beginning. So those are the whole discussions, guys. Right, and, right. Again, part of that puzzle we got coming to us that for those higher paid blue collar jobs is SEMTEC. Yeah. And that will help provide. Yeah. Hopefully, in the future, a, a really good workforce that, that some of the, the companies that would eventually come here would, would benefit from. And, you know, you've got uh, uh, Jones Payne Glass that's going to come and build a, a factory that they move all the stuff from Provo to here, and they're going to have a retail out of it. And so we, we've got some things in the wings that, that are really exciting to anticipate. To, 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 there's a lot of that the the reason I didn't come this morning, I sometimes I suffer very, very uh, 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 intermittently uh, as a week once. I was just miserable as hell this morning. <laughs> and so I thought, well, I, I, I would come, but then it, it, I've taken care of that. And so I wanted to come down and meet you in person. But I was very impressed with all four of your responses uh, mm -hmm. to the questions that we had. And it, it folds in real well, I believe, with what the goals of the city are. You know, uh, one thing I wanted to mention with regards to your comment on parks and having smaller parks, I, I think that's a good thing, but it can get out of hand as well because of the maintenance issues that, that would pop up and the limited resources we have to, to uh, do with that. And uh, so bigger parks sometimes are more economical, but that doesn't mean you should have some of the smaller ones. So sometimes the smaller ones feel like they're in somebody else's yard. Mm -hmm. and, and people don't want, don't want to use it. Yeah. And the housing, you know, uh, I can do, we do need a broad spectrum of, of housing, at the beginners and also the uh, executive housing. That's what a good broad community benefits from. And library, we've never had a brand new library. But again, some of that, like what like Brian says, people use it, love it. And uh, there's a perception out there it's not a very good library because it's in an old building. Yeah, it's it's JC Penney's way back in the, in the day. But, you know, so much resources, we got to, again, the timing issue. But anyhow, I'm very impressed with all four of you. Comments. So, Mark, Larry, Chris, Dale, we'd like to thank you for coming. We'll let you go now. And thank you. We have a thing for the interchange. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Every station plan. I just say that my service plan will be available. I don't know. They're on the other side. I'm going to be quiet. We're doing it on the second, third Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your. It wasn't the outcome you wanted, but you know, it's such a small hammer. You know, so I went through six times and you were just I figured, but they're this yeah. over. Well, then they don't totally overlap. So, okay. <clears throat> Did I have it on our agenda going to close session if we need it? Uh, not on this one. Oh, on. shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and you're, you're not supposed to go into closed session to talk about, unless it's about. Well, this person is about the person. It's about the comments. Oh, well, it wasn't. But, but even like, even like when you, when you interview for like a city council member, you have to do a public. Well, no, I wasn't talking about those. Oh. About one of the persons that's on the committee that. Uh, 
and I wanted to talk about oh. it. I didn't want to talk about him. Oh, okay. <laughs> See if we wanted to replace that first. Anyway, but we don't we can't do that. So okay, feedback. The other thing too, and I don't know how many board members there are. Well, we so have we have, that, we have twelve, right? The, the ordinance that we have doesn't specify it. Right, right. It, but you don't want to get too right. big mm -hmm. and too small. So yeah, I I that was the thought I had. I don't know if you want to look at the number and decide that. Well, the number's one thing, participation to get into yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Right, true. Right. true. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Brian is talking about. Being active. No. So we have we have twelve right now, um, and two of those are kind of out of, out of the like Wynn and Todd. But Todd's been coming most of the time. He's done quite a bit. With, with is Wynn done? Because I talked that. About that's what I was wondering. That's what I wanted. I don't know if he his contract is is finished with us, so he yeah. probably won't be as. So I don't know if he's going to stay involved. to an email um, on my invite to this meeting, and he said he's no longer going to be part of Okay. Okay. So that, that was my conversation with him too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was wondering if the contract is up. Yeah. They're going to get yeah. doing more with it. So I really have two. We got two. Two, two there. We do. <laughs> <laughs> if if we uh, or and we got and some of them like. Uh, we had 12, but three sides from the city council, and, uh, and that, yeah, the rest are pretty much, well, then we got quite a few. We got Dave, myself, and, and the mayor from the city, so we got four from the city. So. Is there anyone still on Zoom? Um, yeah, Teresa and Dave Charles. Yeah, yeah. Are they still here? Yeah, I think so. Can you guys hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. OK, okay. good. I can hear you too. Okay. So, what's your pleasure? Replace two, and if we have to do, who would you like to? I would. I would vote for two. Okay. I would. I would do that. Okay. That's, I would as well. I think it's wise to go ahead and do two. I really like all of them. I mean, they all bring a different you know, yep. perspective. They do. Uh, yeah. The girl's name I have written. Dale. 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 Yeah. Um, I love her perspective. I realize that she's new here. She's younger, but uh, I love that you know she wants to be involved and she's got the detail. All the way to uh, was it Larry, uh, Mark, Mark, Mark was on her show, yeah. who's obviously you know very well experienced and come from completely different places, but they bring such a unique perspective, both of them. So I, I it's been a, a kind of a tough evaluation for me. Um, I, I think. If I were to pick right now, I would probably pick Mark and Chris. It would be my two things, but I would love for them all to be involved. Okay. Well, for me, I think Larry's got the most experience. Yeah. But if you're going to get Larry, yeah. either way, either way, I agree. Yeah. So I think you're going to get him. I think Dale would be awesome on a committee to get some experience. Yeah. And then Chris, maybe also, but Mark would be, I think he's been there, done that a little more than he can add value. And I think as they as guys get a little more experience and they can be grow. So it is nice to have a fresh perspective though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I like most about Chris actually, is just this kind of fresh perspective on things. Yeah. What does he do for a living? Uh he does bank cards. cards. That's right. He's yeah. buying bank 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 cards, which are kind of like corporate guys. So yeah. For the credit card. That's right. I'm not saying that. Chris. I, well, I, don't, I think Larry needs to be on the committee. I mean, he's already committed for the last seven years on the golf committee, and I think he has a lot to offer. I spent some time on the phone with Mark talking to him, and I think he would have huge input on the EDU M Tech thing as far as, because I know Kevin Johnson's big pushes for internships and that kind of stuff, and I think he can help get more programs that way going with EDU and M Tech with what with not only his job, but also with his experience. I would vote those two. I think Chris would be awesome on a like, subcommittee or committee. Yes. So those two, Mark and Larry. 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 I, I think that's where I'm at as well with, with Mark mm -hmm. and Larry. Uh, I know them both real well. I, 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 it's kind of unfortunate because I don't know the other two real well, but I know Mark and Larry real well. I'm interacted with them. Uh, Mark is a, as a uh, state president of the Ohio Council of the 
and Larry and I can attend. So I know them and feel very confident <clears throat> in them. But, and that's unfortunate in some ways because both these, the others are very, very good. Not very good ideas too, and they're both involved, but I'm comfortable with those two. Robert, you're a voting member. What were your opinions? Um, <clears throat> I thought they all had really great suggestions and you have a really tough decision ahead of you. Um, I think that if it was me voting, I would vote for Mark and Chris. Um, I think that that Larry is committed and is going to be committed and is going to help and provide any level of expertise um, continuing forward. Um, but I think you need freshness. If you, if, you want, if you want to grow Payson's economy and if you want to have uh, an impact, then you got to have people that are investing in Payson, right? Like Chris is a, Chris is a person that has moved here. He's invested. He wants to be a part of it, and he's going to add a new perspective. Awesome. Jim, what about you? Yeah, the, so what's the difference about being on the board and being on a committee? Well, the board, it, it has the votes for, and we don't vote a whole lot of things, right. but <laughs> there, uh, there is not a lot of things, really. So there's not a lot, but we can make, we probably have to do a lot better job coming up with uh, things and suggesting and sending stuff to city council as recommendation from the group. Um, so if they're on a committee, would they still come to the monthly meeting? Every, everybody, anybody's open to come to the monthly meeting. So they can still come and be oh, part yeah. of it. So I, anybody can come, oh. discuss, talk. There's not, no, not, not stops anybody from coming. We're informal where you, you have the, you only can talk at the beginning of a meeting if you aren't on the committee. We, it's, we're just open to everybody. So. Hopefully, if they aren't on here and they're on a committee, they'll come and be part of it and learn and things like that. So, yeah, I, I, my feeling is since Larry's so involved anyway um, and has enough knowledge of people in the city to influence and, and share his ideas, I think the young blood is very important. So Chris and or Dale, I think, would be excellent to and Mark, obviously, has great leadership skills. So. Yeah. Kinda. Get your opinion. All right. Well, <laughs> I yeah, you guys and yeah. Teresa as well. Um, I'm with the rest. I think the new the new blood into Payson gives a whole different perspective on different ideas than what we've always done. Um, so if I had to vote, I would either go for um, Chris and or Dell. Um, but I also would vote for Mark Hershaw. Okay. Uh, Teresa, were you here for the interviews? Yes. Okay, what, what, uh, do, you, what do you think? Yeah, I, I like Chris because I, I agree with what you guys said. He, he brings a new perspective. Um, and yeah, Mark would be the other one that I would go with. Just not anything against the little gal. Um, I think she would be great on a committee. Um, I just, those are the two that I thought too. Yeah, we were trying to get more help for you and Chris uh, by having a Dale on there. <laughs> so don't, don't fill out numbers. <laughs> okay, David. You know, I would, uh, I'd probably, I do think that the fresh blood is, is, is good. And I do agree with that, with that comment. I would probably go and, and kind of follow the mayor's um, thoughts almost exactly on there. I would I would probably vote for well not probably I would vote for Mark and for Larry um, for the um, the you know to be on the board on there as voting members and then I would offer the other two an opportunity to get involved in the committees on there and and, and we know just there's a there's always a um, you know a progression that that happens and and there would be an opportunity I think for them to be able to to move into a position for the board and there's not it's that much different but I I would probably put the two more experienced um as voting members and then offer the other two the ability to be able to to get involved and and you know participate and and you know an opportunity to move to the board in the future okay so to me it looks like and i'll have to vote on this it looks like uh, pretty much mark everybody's in agreement with mark so everybody that uh, is uh 
those for Mark to be on our board, uh, raise your hand. Aye. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm voting so as well. Okay, so it looks like that one's that's a done deal. So I guess the next one probably is between Larry and Chris. I'm guessing Dale uh, was kind of was more to be on a, a committee. I think she'll bring a lot of good perspective and have a younger family. Um, so I, I really like her input and, and, and a new person in town with the, with the young family. So, and Chris brings some of that too because he's, he's younger and new. So, uh, so I guess between Larry and, um, um, and Chris. So you're right, right to vote. Let's, uh, <laughs> And Jim, you won't be able to vote yet because you aren't on the you aren't a member yet. So sorry about that. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, do. I guess that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, uh, Larry. Everybody vote for Larry. So we got one, two, three, four. And I would vote for Larry as well, Brian. Five. Okay, everybody for Chris. One, two, I would vote for Chris. One, two, three, four. Four. Did you vote? Yes, I vote for Larry. Okay. 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 So, Dave, for our next city council, can yep. you make a resolution? Yeah, resolution for uh, Chris, uh, for Larry Skinner and Mark uh, Kershaw and uh, Jim Crowley. Uh, and I would really strongly support putting these other two people with two uh, on committees for that extra amount of outside uh, input. Right, and, I, and I'll talk to them personally and ask, and, and I'll ask them to be on a committee and which one they'd like to. I know that Lorene uh, Moore was one that interviewed. Uh, we didn't have her come to this group because the interview groups thought they were better candidates. But she already said that she'd like to be on the committee. So most we'll, we'll guess. I like what David said though, as far as talking about, you know, if they're on these committees and it also will see show their commitment. If, they if come. they're on these committees, if they're right. gonna come and participate, right. and then yeah. when there's an opening, they can move right. into that. I like that idea. And we need to on the committees, uh, two of them function fairly well, the golf one and the downtown. But the other four, we need to have meetings with those committees so they bring stuff back to this group so we got to have these committees do more so each one of those needs to be functioning so ryan yeah so lorraine i'll just tell you right now that that girl is a goer she, she, is. Is, she is i can't believe she's just you give her something and she just goes with it yep yeah we we realized that but we uh, i think it uh, came down to that she might be a little overcommitted, so we, that's so we, oh, okay. So that's that's kind of just so you know what, where we're coming from with that. So, but yeah, she's very committed. She gets involved in lots of things, and we really recognize that. So, okay, anything else? If not, we'll we'll stand adjourned. Okay, thanks everybody. All right, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, I'm going to get my new mainstream meeting. Yeah. 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 Yeah